Welcome to Bible 360 Acts. Acts begins with the disciples asking about Jesus' next step, perhaps to claim Israel as an independent political entity, but that's not the focus Jesus wants them to have. Rather, Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus ascends into heaven, which means Jesus is ruling all creation at the right hand of the Father. The disciples replace Judas as the New Testament Israel with 12 apostles in place of the 12 tribes. The Holy Spirit does descend upon the disciples, men and women, and they miraculously speak the languages of the Jews and Jewish converts who had traveled from across the Roman Empire to celebrate Pentecost in Jerusalem. They preach that the days Israel had been waiting for have arrived. Then Peter declares that Jesus' signs and wonders, which they'd heard about, pointed to Jesus as Messiah. The twist was Israel had not recognized the Messiah, but had rejected and killed him. However, God raised Jesus back up, and this only further vindicated him as the Messiah. Many among the crowds are convicted of their sin, and Peter tells them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Thousands are baptized in Jerusalem. The disciples begin to do exactly the same sorts of things Jesus did, healing and confronting Jewish rulers, helping the hurting and poor, and preaching about the kingdom of God. The Sanhedrin throws the disciples in jail, threatening them and even orchestrating their death. But it works no better than it had to stop Jesus. The once easily cowed disciples now simply refuse to stop, repeatedly saying that they fear God more than they fear men or rulers. The believers become a new community and, and share their possessions with one another. It's completely voluntary, but when Ananias and Sapphira try to look good while lying about their contributions, they are struck dead. This posturing and deception is completely out of bounds and God forcefully stops it. The church experiences growing pains, which is a good sign. The job is too big for the apostles, so they appoint seven deacons to help them, including Stephen. Stephen is so successful in his preaching that the Sanhedrin begins to prosecute him. Stephen retells the Sanhedrin the story of Israel's history, highlighting how God's people had often missed his calling or actively opposed Yahweh. Uh, but none of this stopped Yahweh in the past, and it would not stop Jesus in the present. Furious, they stone him to death, and they begin to more violently oppose the church. But driven out by persecution in Jerusalem, the Jewish leaders are unwittingly spreading the gospel further and faster, forcing men like Philip to carry out Jesus' command, going to Judea and Samaria and even further. Saul, who presides over Stephen's death is determined to stop this movement from spreading outside Jerusalem. He goes on a mission to Damascus to round up and kill Christians, but Jesus stops him and redirects Saul. After being blinded and healed, Saul sees the light, and now he does everything he can to share the gospel he'd once opposed. After lots of explanation and the Spirit's proddings, the apostles see Paul is preaching Christ, and they welcome him. They recognize he's not just a partner, but a fellow apostle sent to the Gentiles, uh, commissioned by Jesus, just like them. In a parallel account, Peter is called by the Spirit to eat with and baptize the Roman centurion. Peter receives a vision where God declares that all food can now be part of Peter's diet, uh, but more importantly, that demonstrates that all people are part of God's plan of salvation in Christ. Peter explains, after going back to the other disciples in Jerusalem, salvation is even for the uncircumcised Gentiles. Paul goes on three missionary journeys, and a pattern tends to emerge. Paul goes to cities, and first he goes to the Jews in the new city, but after many reject him, he goes also to the Gentiles. He faces opposition and is often attacked, sometimes by troublemakers sent to him all the way from Jerusalem. But the gospel continues to spread, and that's a constant theme in Acts. Jesus and the gospel continues to overcome. They face Jewish and Roman opposition, business, and demonic opposition. They run into ignorance and misunderstandings. However, the mission of Jesus and the kingdom of God is victorious, not through conquest, violence, or riches, but through the preaching of the gospel and the Holy Spirit's work. Even the suffering and martyrdom of God's people often serves as a powerful testimony to the enduring power of God's kingdom. The Jerusalem Council in Acts 15 is pivotal because as the gospel spreads more and more, Gentiles believe and are baptized. A question keeps cropping up. Do Gentiles need to be circumcised and adopt all the Torah? The council remembers Peter had visions and explicit instructions from Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The gospel was for all. The apostles and Peter and Paul in particular testify before the council that what matters is faithfulness to Yahweh, Jesus, and the forgiveness of sins. They provide only a few rules instead of demanding adherence to the whole Torah. The takeaway from the council is that they do not want to burden or hinder the gospel, but they do want to encourage faithfulness, and this will mean abstaining from worshiping idols in any way, as well as abstaining from sexual immorality. In his last missionary journey, Paul feels compelled to go back to Jerusalem, just like Jesus. However, Paul will not die. He must go to Rome, because 
Jesus is not just the Jewish king, but the king of the whole world, of which Rome is the capital. Like Jesus, Peter, and John before him, Paul will be opposed, persecuted, and put on trial by both Jewish and Roman rulers. A plot by some in Jerusalem to assassinate Paul arises, but the Romans get wind of it, and Paul is scurried off at night with a Roman escort to a higher Roman court. Paul shares his testimony before several Roman rulers, but rather than return to Jerusalem, where there's a plot to kill him, Paul appeals to Caesar and is sent to Rome. Uh, but Paul is shipwrecked on his way to Rome. It looks like all will die on the ship, but Paul encourages his traveling companions and along with the captors that Yahweh will save them. This is a microcosm of what's been happening throughout the book. The world and its powers, either inadvertently or belligerently, try to stop the gospel, uh, but the gospel perseveres and even is preached to those who try to snuff it out. Even under house arrest in Rome, Paul is preaching the good news of Jesus. The gospel is well on its way to the whole world. No power on heaven and earth, not even death itself, can stop Jesus and the gospel.